health is an outfit that looks different on everybody. A uh, very good evening to all the present here. I, Sakshan Bhargav, on the behalf of the entire city family, welcome you to today's healthy and thoughtful initiative financing your health. Like we 360TF are committed to making your company working capital cycle healthier and, uh, and to take a healthier reducing trade finance cost by enabling liquidity, this webinar is also committed to making your 2024 and the coming year healthier. I'm sure most of us present here today because this year we pledged to keep our new year resolution a little longer than we have thought. At 360TF, we have seen our co-founder being very passionate about fitness and health, from posture yoga to having various outdoor activities to motivate all 50 plus employees to stay healthy and fit. It has been an embite in the culture of our organization. I can probably say most of us are a part of a fit fintech initiative. This webinar today in association with the Kua Nutrition shall swap most of us you to feed to, as you will realize the physical and mental fitness does not require you to take a big decisions. Rather small steps. Being a trade finance expertise organization, we understand the value of having the best at your hands. We decided to associate the, this award-winning celebrity and make the beginning of your year less worthy of for fitness. Well, thank you, Sakshan, for handing over. And I welcome Ryan in this yet another uh, you know season for us to start our new year with a big bang and with a with such an important topic that we all foresee. Uh, is, is something that we find it difficult to manage. I'm happy to welcome and honored to introduce Mr. Ryan Fernando to all of you present here. Ryan Fernando is an award-winning celebrity sports nutritionist with two Guinness World Records and two Olympic medals under his belt. His client list includes American Olympic athlete Kenneth Barna, cricketers Virat Kohli, Shikhar Dhawan, and Bollywood superstars Amir Khan, Pardeen Khan, and Abhishek Bachchan, just to name a few. He's founder of Kwan Nutrition, Signature Clinics, and Institute Nutrition, a platform for online nutrition education. Ryan is a nutrition and health coach, nutrition genetics counselor, podcaster, speaker, lecturer, radio jockey, author, and the founder of Kwan Nutrition Clinics and InstituteNutrition.com. A life member with Nutrition Society of India and a British Commonwealth scholar with two Masters of Science degrees, Food Biotechnology from University of Scythalid in Scotland, and Clinical Biochemistry from Goa Medical College. He's a certified health coach from USA. Before we hear Ryan, let us all first get to know the resolutions each one of us has made. I request you all to put down your resolutions in the chat box, while of course, Ryan will take up the podium and speak to us and tell us about what he is, what he has planned for us in the best way possible. I welcome you, Ryan, to the floor. Actually, thank you so much. That was a long introduction. I hope we didn't lose any followers or participants on that. Pankaj, good to always see you. And I feel blessed to be invited to talk to people who uh, rule the financial world. Let me spend half an hour with each one of you to improve your balance sheet in 2024. Uh, you all are finance wizards, gurus, climbing the ladder of how to use money and make money grow for yourself. And when you do this, uh, you use your human intellect you use your human vibration, you use your human body, you use your human relationship skills. And as an auditor of human health, when I meet people, give me about 30 seconds in a room with each one of you. And I will tell you in 30 seconds, looking at your eyes, your pitch, your tone, your breath, and how you breathe, I will tell you whether your balance sheet is good, bad, or ugly. So I can be called the chartered accountant um, of health. And, and, and that is the terminology that each one of you would answer. So today I hope and pray that you are on this. If you're on LinkedIn and you're joining us, Namaskara, uh, Salam Alaikum, wherever you are in whichever part of the world, uh, Keful Halak, how is life going for you? Um, I live in the city of Bangalore uh, and I'm very grateful for the internet and Zoom to allow me to talk to people across the world. I'm also grateful that people give me their time these days in all of this interrupted marketing of Instagram short one minute videos, LinkedIn half a second videos. So I'm hoping to catch your attention from a personalized perspective. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to start off with sharing my screen and have my PowerPoint. I hope I'm not going to be too boring. If I'm getting boring, quietly send me a message saying, hey, Ryan Fernando, you're a little bit boring. Uh, the first thing that you can do is you can scan this QR code and you can find me on Instagram. At the end, I'll give you my LinkedIn profile. Um, what qualifies me to talk to you is one, I'm educated in the field of nutrition, health and medicine. I am not a doctor, but I'm the closest to a person not prescribing you medicine, but using food as your drug, using exercise as a pill and using sleep 
as a soothing balm to get you to the next level. Let's say I want to make you an office Olympian. And the people in these pictures are all superstars. My latest superstar is Anupam Kher. I'm having a ball of a time dealing with this Kashmiri superstar giant of a, of a Bollywood celebrity. Now, many of you who are coming in today may say, but they are celebrities. You are the celebrity of your life. They became celebrities because they chose very early on in their life to become celebrities. I never knew I would become a celebrity nutritionist. I always thought I'll be a nutritionist, but the day I said I'm going to become a celebrity nutritionist a decade ago, I began taking care of two things. The talent or the necessary subject matter expertise, like you as a financial individual, have to become good at your job, at your financial capabilities, people skills. And the second part is how do you get good in your body so people follow you? So if you're a 27 year old in 360 TF, or if you're a vendor, or if you're a partner, or if you're a client who consumes this financial data, when you meet people, you are the celebrity in that introduction. So it's very important how you breathe, how you talk, how you hold your energy in the communication today. So the first takeaway from this slide is I want you to see your picture in this slide. You are the celebrity of your life. You own the balance sheet of your life. If you don't own the balance sheet of your life, you will not know your TRP rating. And your TRP rating is what I'm going to define for you today. So I'm going to talk to you about how we can do some simple things, okay? I'm not going to give you a diet plan. I cannot give you a diet plan because in my clinic, Qua Nutrition, where I practice, yeah, this logo up over here, we do custom nutrition planning, meaning I take your blood test, I take your genetic test, I take your microbiome, which is your stool or poop analysis. I do a blood test for your omega-3. Then I sit down with you for one hour and I ask you, where do you work? What is your culture? What is your background? Which part of the world are you from? Where have you relocated to? Who's cooking food for you? What are the timings of your office? And then I construct a very personalized nutrition plan. So people ask me, should I drink coffee? I don't know till you do your genetic test. So when I did my genetic test, I love drinking coffee. I used to drink five cups of coffee a day. And then I found out my body, my genetics does not like coffee. In fact, drinking five cups of coffee will give me a heart attack or stroke, which two of my grandfathers did get because they drank too much of coffee. Oh no, but coffee, I read this internet article. No, 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 no. Do not go with Google. By the way, Google employees come to Ryan Fernando. I want to tell you something. In Bangalore, Google comes to Ryan Fernando for diet planning and diet counseling for their webinars and seminars. There will be a time when AI will be able to integrate this, but still such time, you need to holistically balance your nutrition with small tips, okay? So, first point, 2024, the people that are there in this webinar, you've heard this statement, health is the new wealth. I'll share a story with you. I had a gentleman from the city of Dubai, billionaire, Indian. He says, Ryan, I have 22, whatever you call it, elite vehicles, luxury vehicles. So I said, sir, Rolls Royce? He said, I have eight Rolls Royce. When COVID struck, he's like, you know what? What's the use of the 22 super luxury vehicles which are worth maybe about $100 million? What's the, what's the point of having all of these vehicles if uh, my body is not the Rolls Royce of my life? Please understand, I work with some of the richest people in the world, about half a dozen billionaires with me. They come for a nutrition plan because they want to bespoke how they should be eating scientifically. Then I ask them, why do you want to do this? They say, Ryan Fernando, we can't change our body. We can change our house. We can change our jet. We can change our car. We can change our company. We can change our staff. We can change our spouse. You can't change your mother, father, and your sibling and your human body. So this is a very nice joke in my house. My wife keeps saying, why do you keep telling people in seminar you, you can change your spouse? It's true. You can change everything except your human body. So what are you doing? Why are you behaving that you need a school principal in 2024 where there's enough of knowledge for you to get your backside off a couch and start putting down written resolutions like you do in your job? You go to work because a boss is tracking you. You go to work because you're an entrepreneur. You go to work because you have a top line, you have a bottom line, and you have to perform. You go to work and give the best that you can from this body because you feel that's the right thing to do. What about your body? What about your health? Is it not the new wealth? So can you tell me what have you written? Can you tell me what have you written down as a philosophy in 2024? Pick one point. My one point is I want to gain four kgs of muscle this year. I'm going to find it very difficult at the age of 48 
to gain 4 kgs of muscle because as you grow older in the male you lose testosterone if you're a female you lose testosterone you lose estrogen so we're all gaining only fat but what is it that i need to do so when i write down a quantifiable goal to my health don't say i want to live nice i want to have good body i want to have nice hair i want to lose weight do not use qualitative goals you are all finance executives use quantifiable goals i want to reduce bp no 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 i want to reduce my bp by 5 points i want to reduce my blood sugar by 60 points but hang on ryan fernando i don't even know my sugar level ha ah, you don't know your sugar level in 2024 how dumb can we get now artificial intelligence the new watches are even tracking bp and sweat what are we doing oh how many dollars how much transition how much arbitrage how much all of that stuff you are all gurus on that but when it comes to the guru of your body you are putting it under the rug so i want you to first make a resolution for yourself like how i met pankaj many years ago he made a resolution he said ryan fernando how can i make my body younger at 48 years of age that's my age my metabolic age is 33 so i'm now going to give you incentive to start taking care of your health i had a client mr vishnu pai he was 72 years of age and when he stood on my weighing scale in my clinic which measures body age visceral fat muscle percentage and health uh, the the fat percentage his body age was 73 so he's one year older he worked with me for one year we dropped 11 kg of fat off his 100 kg frame we dropped only 1 kg of muscle his body age went from 72 to 60 on my weighing scale 60 years of age his his birth certificate age was still 72 in fact a year later he became 73 but now on my weighing scale is 60 years of age his son sent me a big gift hamper massive gift hamper the biggest dry fruit hamper i've ever seen in my life it must have been worth some 40 50000 rupees like rain sir thank you very much you made me very rich man it's like uh sir i don't understand no 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 see papa whom you worked with papa makes consultancy fee of 2 crore rupees a year 2 crore rupees a year for those of you who are foreigners over here that's uh 2 crores is how much uh panka tell me out of this now 2 crores in dollars is how much it'll be about a 250000 dollars about a quarter of a million dollars okay so so he's earning about a quarter of a million dollars a year so son is super excited because my papa now thinks he's 60 years of age do the math 12 years of consultancy feeling wonderful my health is so good it's my wealth 12 years into to a quarter billion dollars i suddenly made 4 million dollars just taking care of my health please understand ladies and gentlemen you are the real estate vector you are the investment vehicle you are the creator of your wealth but unless your body is vibrating at the best possible frequency case in example mr rakesh junjunwala may soul rest in peace was a very rich man and i'm sure he would give half of his wealth to be alive today i feel his family and friends would give all of his wealth to have him around so there are two people here who need to influence you yourself and your family but if you have to influence your family like i told mr pankaj he has to first take care of his health before he influences his spouse his children and his employees and now he's bringing it to you his consumers colleagues and uh, fellow employees so it's not that hr or this is like oh we want you to take care of your health because it's the fashionable thing to do if it is the fashionable thing to do then take off your shirt when you go for a beach vacation to goa but if it's not fashionable and you want to live till 75 80 walking disney world with your grandchildren lifting weights in the gym while half of your team can't keep pace with you i have a 27 year old team also pankaj average age half of them can't keep pace with me i go 5 6 seminars in the day they're like oh, sir how are you able to talk for so long because it's what you do how you sleep i got 8 hours of sleep yesterday how many of you in today's seminar got 8 hours of sleep i care ganta hoots what everyone says you need to make money and if you do not have 8 hours of sleep i will show you blood test data that cortisol is killing you silently you will die 15 years younger and if you're earning 1 million dollars a year your family has lost 15 million dollars but jokes apart jokes apart i want to be passionate about motivating you just to start not on a diet plan start with checkups start with small small things start with just writing i am weighing 79 kg i should be 70 kg can i lose 1 kg per quarter not even 1 kg per month 1 kg per quarter once you start putting targeted those of you who run businesses understand the importance of target this year i told my ceo i want to become a million dollar company how can you get me to become a million dollar company that's the target 
So we are now thinking, what all do we need to do to reach to that level? It's not easy to get so many people doing that plan. Why am I sharing this with you? I'm sharing this with you is quantifiable goals in anything that you do will result in some action plan. What is the action plan? The first action plan, I told you about the Rolls Royce. This is a, this is a statement. I want to get out of the way. This is a statement. Pankaj, can you do me a favor? Can you read this aloud for me? Yeah. Your body is the most expensive real estate you will ever own. Do you agree with me? 100%. Right? So even Himakshi is nodding her head over there. Think about it. Now I'm going to ask you a very provocative, very provocative question. Do you live in your body as a tenant or as a landlord? Do you live in your body as a tenant or a landlord? Answer this question truthfully to yourself. And if you write landlord, we have started your journey. If you start as tenant, I need to evict you from your body. I need to throw you out. I need you to make you rebuy your into your body as a new deal. So we'll have Pankaj write down a new agreement. I promise 360 TF this year to enable my body to be rebought. What are the investments I have to do? Drink six liters of four liters of water. I need to weigh uh, in a BMI of 22. Okay, what is the action plan for that? I need to get eight hours of sleep. What is the action plan for that? One action plan, disconnect Netflix. You know, I went for Christmas holiday and I said, I'm going to relax for five days. I went on to Netflix. I became a zombie because I suddenly started sleeping four hours because I binged watch. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but please check. Netflix CEO once said, you could Google this up and check if it's true or not and tell me if I'm wrong. Netflix CEO once said, we are in a battle with sleep. Your body is the most expensive real estate. All of us live in it as chaprasis. Chaprasis is an Indian term, which is meaning uh, tune. Tenant. So I'm, I'm trying to convince the world the day you understand that you are the most valuable asset and you believe in self-love and you believe in taking care of yourself, you'll start saying, what can I do to stop being lazy and living like a tenant in my body? So I'm hoping out of the 60 or 100 people that are here in this seminar today, I'm just hoping that one of you decides to make the change, saying that, you know what, I'm going to write down a few goals. I'm going to start behaving like a tenant. And don't worry if you fail to pay the bills in a few months. But start. Like 365 days in the year, can you get eight hours of sleep? But Ryan, I did only 100 days. I'll be like, yeah, you got 100 days of eight hours of sleep, balance seven hours, and maybe in balance 100 days, you got five to six hours. My point is, once you start tracking, then next year, oh, 2024, I got 100 days of eight hours sleep. This year, I'm going to get 120 days. You improve your body year on year. I want to share something with you. Uh, if you if you look at this, uh, if you if I have to go this way, if you look at this whole list over here, right? Can you see over here the fat cell? Yeah. Yes. Eight Himachi, years. Uh, Pankaj, how many years does fat cells re reside in the human body? Eight years. Eight years. And can you look at maybe the uh, the lung cell or the stomach cell? Stomach cell is the third from the top. Uh, two to nine days. Right. So your stomach cells is two to nine days of eat, khao, pio, jo bhi kaya, dada, full thappat de do and all. But after all of that thappat and all, fat comes and says, hey, bhai, hum bhi hai. I'm, tera dost hai. I'm your friend. I am fat. I'm going to sit in your hips and your bum and your waist and everything. And then it says, bhai, main tera saath jodi kar diya. Abhi main tera tenant hu. Aap mere ko evict nahi kar sakta. You can't take me out of your body. You can't, you can't serve me an eviction notice for eight years. Himakshi now is thinking, oh my God, if I eat another batata vada in 2024, that batata vada is going to stay as me as a tenant. So, I am trying to convince people to understand that as you gain weight in your working career, you keep saying, I'll do it next year. I'll do it next year. I'll do it in the next job. I'll do it in the next business. No, oh, that guy, once it's inside of you is, is for eight years. I understood this fortunately because I'm in this business of the balance sheet about 20 years ago. So hence I keep my weight in check which means that's why my body age is 33 because when I stand on the weighing scale, I have a body fat percentage of 18% and that's the age of a 33, a percentage of a 33 year old. But a person who's 48 should have 29% body fat. So once you begin to understand these constructs, by the way, uh, what is not listed over here is muscle cells. Muscle cells lie with you for 14 years. So if you can change your muscle cells and build muscle, especially women, I'm recommending, or my wife just gone for weight training right now. So most important thing. Okay, 
So we were talking about fat and eight years in the body. Now we need to do 10,000 steps for maintenance. Walk and talk, walk and talk, walk and talk. I'm actually here in the seminar and I'm dancing around. Most of you are sitting down. So now I've got a few thousand steps. Yeah. Okay. Buy a walking desk. Take your best friend for a walk. Take your dog for a walk. Right. Let's, let's have a meeting. So Pankaj, whenever you meet with your leadership team and all of this stuff, hey, bye, sab log, achow, let's go for a walk. Because as you begin to move, you even put more blood circulation in your head. Now, the reason we are gaining weight, the reason we are gaining weight is because we are a DJ society. DJ means desk jockey. Hello? Hello? Is my signal working? I'm a desk jockey. Hello? That's all. That's all is the movement. Sit in your car, drive to the supermarket, go there, come back to the nearest parking lot near to the to the to the shopping gate, then drive to the basement of my house, then go up the lift, then I do this, you do this, all of us do it. So we have to construct physical movement. Okay. The other thing, which is a secret, and I'm not a very good expert, but I go to a breath coach. And what I've understood is we are all shallow breathers. If you can breathe five seconds in slow breath, five second hold and five second out, apparently this lowers your parasympathetic systems, adrenal and, and, and anxiety. And when that comes down, you store lesser fat. So here's a secret that I've given all my billion dollar clients. After every phone call, after every meeting, after every webinar, after every, any interaction with anyone, take 25 seconds out for your breath and you go like this. Now I'm holding. And if you look at your exercise variable, your heart rate is just dropped by three points. If you could do three such breaths, so 25 into, into three seconds. Sorry, sorry, my math is very bad. Chi, 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 chi. Five, five, five is 15 seconds. 15 seconds. I see I've, I've made your life even more easier. 15 seconds. By the way, there are people who can do 10 second breath hold. My yoga instructor does 22 seconds. So 22 seconds in slow breath in, slow hold for 20 seconds and out. But for most people, you and me, I'm Admi, just jockey, let's do five in, five hold, five out. Now people like me are gurus of wisdom of nutrition and health and wellness. We give you this. I'll tell you where people fail. People fail to practice because there is no guru at their desk telling them what to do. So what can you do? There are nice apps on Apple and Android, which are known as breath apps. Download one breath app, put it on your desktop and make it a point. If your HR can convince you to take a breath work every day, this will help you. If your HR can convince you to take 10,000 steps or stand at your desk and do something, please do this. This is the first part of my diet plan. Sir, ye khao, wo khao, ye khao, aray bhai, khane ke cheez ye pehla kar do. Saas lene ka hai aur pedal se chalo. This is the first basic stuff, right? And, and what happens is if you do this correctly, I just eat Christmas plum cake. Nice big piece. Because I know I'm going to work out. I know I'm going to eat well for the rest of the day, but I'm going to enjoy that plum cake. Guilt-free as a landlord in my body. Although my blood test might say much differently next month when I do it. Okay, Ryan, your sugar has gone up. But I'll keep you posted on that. So nutrition now is bio-individual. This concept is, Ryan, sir, can I eat Mari biscuit? Can I have tea? Can I have coffee? Can I have dood? Can I have milk? In fact, the other day I was in, in a podcast and the guy's like, sir, do you take any stance on any food? And I said, nay, sir, I'm a judge. I'm a judge. On my right side is the defendant. On my left side is the prosecutor. In between is papaya. My candidate stands in front of me. And the candidate says, sir, should I eat papaya? So I asked the defense attorney, what do you feel? Papaya is very good in beta carotene. It's very good in fiber. It has got astaxanthin in it. It's got uh, B, uh, blah, 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 vitamin A, which is high in it. Other side, a prosecutor says, no, sir, this is a pregnant lady. Papaya could be abortive in effect. You can't give papaya to the other. So now as judge, I have to pass execution judgment on my client. And I say, considering all the inputs that I've got, I deem papaya fit for you. But for the other person, no papaya for that person. Nutrition is very bio-individual. Please understand, you have been taught to eat out of love and culture from Dadi Ma, from Mama, from the people in your house. My mother till today says, hey, you bloody big shot nutritionist, you eat your bread. You are a goan. I've written a book called Wheatless. I stopped eating wheat 10 years ago. Nobody ever told me I had adult acne till I was 35. 
nobody ever told me. And then when I did my genetic testing, that guy said, Saab, aap itna log ka genetic test ka testing kar rahe. You are doing so many people. We will do yours free, of course. And I was like, okay, okay, please do it. They did my genetic test. Hello, Ryan Fernando, Goan should not eat bread. You know, Goans are called pawalas, right? We eat bread as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So look at it. Culturally, I was taught. I had a I had a Jat Haryani who had a cow shed and 60 cows. And I told them that the kid was lactose intolerant. Hey, ye doctor saab pagal hai. Last 20 generations, you've been drinking milk. But genetically, the, the science is now evolving how to eat scientifically. So I'm just saying that what you could start with is a blood test, a genetic test, and a microbiome test. These are some very fascinating pieces of advice because then when you go on vacation, you're looking at everyone eating bread and then you're like, would you like to try this sardo bread? It's gluten low. No. Call up the chef before I reach. Hello, Ryan Fernando. I need gluten-free bread. Yes, sir. We're making gluten-free bread for you. Few things on nutrition that I'd like to convey to you. You can add sprouts and microgreens to your charts, to your pohas, to your snack. Microgreens or sprouts are amazing. Two issues. Nobody likes the taste. Nobody has the time to prepare it. Solution for no time to prepare for it, go to your startups in Dubai or in Bangalore, wherever, who are making the microgreens, buy it for them, get a subscription. Second point, you know how you have to do SIPs, systematic investment plan. You want to you keep that money and spend it on a vacation to Switzerland or whatever. But something inside of you says, keep, keep aside little money, keep aside little. It's painful. So is sometimes eating food that is healthy. And by the way, if you add a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of chaat masala, a little bit of tamarind, a little bit of masala, it actually tastes good. Adding besan to roti flour. Reduce your grain of carbohydrate. Increase your protein in your roti. Add curry leaves to your dals and sabzis. Add moringa leaves. Dalshini cinnamon. I don't know if you know this. Actually, it's a fat burner. There was a study saying when people ate quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, be careful, you get mouth ulcers. It's very heaty. But for those of you, dalshini or cinnamon that agrees with you, it reduces belly fat over a three-month period. So what I do is add it to tea or coffee, green tea, green coffee. Sunflower pumpkin seeds, very good for brain health, very good for muscles. And Pankaj, there are a lot of cranky people in your office. All the time, you know, those, those complaint pots, as I call them. Every time they complain, just give them a gift of pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. It helps the brain work very well. They've got a, they've got a nutritional deficiency. That's why they're always complaining. The body inside is telling them something and then that reflects in their personality. Trust me, I meet people in 30 minutes, 30 seconds to one minute. I can tell you how they're vibrating. Using dates, raisins, berries instead of sugars for sweetness and porridges and pancakes. I know now a lot of people don't do porridges, but you know, when you're very too busy, you'll have like a bowl of cereal or a bowl of porridge or a smoothie. Smoothie is another version of a porridge or pancakes. Pancakes is our Indian style is dosa uh, or uh, the other way is a chapati. You can put in some of these dates, raisins and berries because of the antioxidant powers and their sweetness is better than putting jaggery or sugar any day. By the way, when you buy uh, dates, raisins, berries, all of these things, one thing that I've started doing five years ago is I buy organic food. If you come to my house, you will see those fruit flies roaming around. I don't know if you remember in your Dadima's house, they used to have that basket dish to put over all the food because all these flies and kidas used to be around. Today, we go to anyone's house, there's no fly or kida. Why? Because they're spraying the crop. Day before yesterday, a politician farmer came for a diet counseling. He owns 50 acres of pomegranate farm. So I'm like, sir, pomegranate is super, super pomegranate. Sir, the seeds of pomegranate, if you eat it for one year, 100 grams of pomegranate, it clears up the blocks in your arteries. This is a scientific paper. The pharmaceutical industry doesn't want you to know about this paper. 60% reduction in plaque formation. 60% reduction. Anybody who's a heart patient, pomegranate, pomegranate, pomegranate. He says, sir, if you know how much of fungicide we spray on the crop, you will not give uh, pomegranate to your um, clients. My housekeeping lady, Mona. Sir, you take pomegranate. It's very nice, sir. In the market, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And you take pomegranate. And you take the big pomegranate. It comes quickly. It's a big one. Yes, madam. But this is my big pomegranate and big pomegranate. It's organic. Sir, but it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Have you noticed organic food is not perfect? It spoils very quickly. You'll get worms and larvae in it very fast. Because the chemical is not sprayed. So that guy is there, which for me, I see a larvae. I don't go, hey. I'm like, cool. He's growing inside, which means it's safe enough for me to eat. Flip, flip in chemical organic uh, to, to organic practices. This is what I wanted to convey to you. And then what happens is you reduce your chemical load on your liver and kidney for the next 20, 30 years of your life. If there's nothing you take away from this seminar, take away the fact that if you can eat organic. Now I know all the Indians over here, what they say, why, how do we know they're not cheating us?
I think we need to believe in a lot of people out there. If you still don't believe, do what I do. I make friends with people. I make friends with people. So I buy happy hands in Bangalore. I made friends with the founder Manjuna. Hey Manjuna, how you make these eggs? So he told me the whole story how they do poultry farming and all. He says, see what we do, we go and find 20 villages. We tell all the villages, we will help you in farming. Let your chickens roam free in the farms. We'll give Ayurveda, Brahmi, this, fol folate, this, that, omega-3 in the feed and everything. We'll give Ayurveda, we'll give natural, blah, blah, blah. So I know that his eggs are much better. I can see it is much better. I know his eggs spoil faster also because they're organic. So where am I going with this? Make friends. You are the landlord in your body. You have to go and buy saman for your house, right? How many of you own your own house? I recently bought the house that I'm standing in right now. So when I went to change one of the windows, I happily went to the shop. Why? Konsa kitki hai? Sir, Italian, kit, Italian glass hai, African glass hai, Chinese glass hai, or uh, Bangalore ka glass hai? I'm like, sabse best glass konsa hai? Sir, ye Italian glass is very good. But it's not good in our climate. Oh, okay. Sabse best wala? Sir, you take uh, Chinese. Hey, no, 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 I don't, I don't want Chinese. Chinese I don't want. I'm very patriotic. Why would I go and make a decision making when a contractor should be doing that? Because it's my house. So what are you doing about your house? Where's your newest resolution? Where is you taking care of you? You know, I have people spending 25,000 bucks on a bottle of whiskey. And when they ask, when I ask them to buy glacial mineral water, sir, 90 rupees for one bottle of water, what sir? So then people sheepishly ask me, sir, does really Virat Kohli drink 800 rupees mineral water? I'm like, of course he does. Because he doesn't drink Johnny Walker, no? Sorry, I'm not supposed to take names and all of the brands and all. But you get where I'm going, right? You will spend nicely on liquid engineering alcohol, which is drugifying and destroying your liver and kidney. But for pure alkaline water, glacial water, Ganga Jal, oh, Kimalaya se aare. Nee. Everyone, please take a sip of water. We're 60% water. Imagine if 60% of your portfolio was in gold. Where would you be today? Would you buy um, asset class of equity or gold? Where gold is giving the highest return. So you guys will do all of these case study analysis on financial instruments. You know, sharir ke andar ghanta wala analysis. First one, change your water, go organic. Brilliant. This is my diet plan tips. Okay. Easy tip to follow. Do not eat three hours before going to bed. Sir, I came back. This Pankaj fellow kept me in the office for so long till 10 o'clock at night. Now I have reached home just now at 11 o'clock. Now I have to eat food and go to sleep. Don't eat food. Drink one glass of water. Say, Pankaj sir, Jai Shri Krishna. And drink your water. Finished. Go to sleep. The human race is eating too much of food. Do you agree with me? Think of our ancestors. Pankaj, your grand, great-grandfather and my great-grandfather who lived, let's say, 1,000 years ago. In ke paas fridge tha. In ke paas supermarket tha. In ke paas Zomato, Swiggy, Uber Eats, Uber Eats tha. Kuch nahi tha. They ate food which was grown in that 100 kilometer radius. That's it. If you're a bacha, you ate in 100 kilometers radius. If you're a poor man, you ate one kilometer radius. So we assume to be have taught. My Both my in-laws are medical doctors. There was a massive argument then they were here for Christmas because their daughter doesn't eat breakfast. My father knows an orthopedic surgeon. Tum kya nutritionist hai? Mera beti breakfast nahi kare. I'm like, your daughter has not had an asthma attack in 15 years of marriage. She's married to me, not a single asthma attack. Have you seen her health? She doesn't go to the hospital. You guys are all giving medicine, everything is giving. I went to the hospital. I got married. See her weight. She is in the best shape of the life. She lifts the heaviest. She is the sexiest looking. That's what she says at least at 48 years of age. Now, where's, where's my point on this? She has figured out she doesn't want to eat breakfast because she doesn't feel good. I'm not saying you should or should not eat breakfast. I eat breakfast. I'm saying discover your capacity to eat. Don't eat because I have dinner. I have to eat dinner. Ask yourself, are you feeling hungry? If you skip a meal, you're not going to die. Research has shown fasting for 30 hours actually rejuvenates the body. Our ancient ancestor did Shravan fast, Purnima fast, this fast, that fast, Lent, Ramadan, everything there is there logically documented that fasting worked. And you know why they did fasting? Because they knew humans were too weak to give up food on their own. So they need a spiritual direction. I'm giving you a functional direction. There was a Nobel Prize won on autophagy where the Japanese medical doctor said that at 30 to 60 hours of fasting, all cancer cells and all fat cells in the body implode. So when people come to me, why do you think the best in the world come to me? Like this Ryan Fernandez is a crazy fellow, yaar. But he gave a diet plan, he didn't give anything. He didn't give anything, because human race is eating too much. 
think about it. And if you want to talk about climate change, you want to talk about climate change, you, my friends, and me, my friends, are eating more than we actually require. So the growing of that crop or the consumption of that crop, and if you're a non-vegetarian, the tripling or the quadrupling of the carbon footprint on animal produce, that goes into your system where you could have survived with only 50 grams, you've eaten 250 grams. Pot full of biryani, brilliant biryani in Bangalore. One biryani for one person. I have calculated it feeds three people as desk jockeys. Huh, if Pankaj, you are a slave and you are doing manual labor in the field and all, then you need the full biryani. So don't eat three hours before going to bed. So try and get your dinner within one hour of sunset. 6.37. Sir, I'm still in the office. Oh, order on sandwich, eat in the office, finished, over, done. Sir, when I reach home, I'm very tired. I'm watching Netflix. I want to eat something, drink water. You are not a tenant in your body. You are a landlord. If your stomach says, Bhai, book hai kuch de do, tum kya karta hai? Hello, bhai, pizza bech do. Stomach bota hai, thumbs up, thumbs up. Tenant, tenant mentality. Aray, thot fort karo, yaar, hum iske sharif ke andar nahi jiega. We'll change it after 10 years. After 10 years, you go to doctor, doctor says you can't change your stomach. You can't change your acidity, you can't change your liver, you can't change your kidney, you can't change your joint problems, you can't change your heart attack problems, you can't change your uh, brain problems, Alzheimer. All of these are related to nutrition. You know, the Instagram is now blowing up. We were doing this in 2010. We were telling people with structured advice what to do. Now you're hearing this on the Instagram and they're actually finding patients on their own doing this stuff. Intermittent fasting, not eating, you know, three hours before sunset and stuff like that. Know your heart rate during workout. A lot of people are dying of heart attacks. So what? Oh, I'm landlord in my body. Ah, come on, let's work out. I'm James Bond. I got to show off to that chick in the gym. I'm 45 years of age. I got to push more bench press. I never went to the gym for the last 10 years. Go easy, everyone. Post-vaccination, we have all had higher inflammatory markers. The world has gotten more stressful, more advanced. So you want to run the rat race. So you run on a treadmill very fast. When you go to the gym, my sincere advice to you is do what I do. I smile in the gym and I enjoy it. Trainer is like, sir, sir, next rep. Are, bye. Give me five minutes, man. Let me enjoy it. I've turned up in the gym, no? My 40 minutes workout is my peaceful time. Why? Because of the inflammatory markers. People are more prone to heart attacks. Go slow and steady. After one or two years of being James Bond in the gym, slow and steady, then up your level. So that's why I recommend wear an exercise variable when you work out. Do not cross 140, 150 heart rate in the gym if you're a novice. Pankaj, you have a tea coffee machine in your office? Yes, we do have. I'm going to save you some money, okay? Whatever you save, you send to me as a New Year's gift next year. If you drink one cup of coffee or tea with milk, 100 ml milk, 2 teaspoons sugar. Himakshi, if you drink two cups of tea or milk, Himakshi, I'm, I'm not picking on you. You're the only person I can see in the seminar today, okay? Forgive me for this. But Himakshi, if you drink two cups of milk and tea, so white milk with sugar, in the full year, on one cup, you're consuming 27 liters of milk. If you drink two cups of tea or coffee, you're consuming 55 liters of milk. 55. Right? Over here, I've been very nice. I've said you need to walk for 59 days of one hour walk to burn only those cup, one cup of coffee. So many of you will say yes. The 59 hours of walking is equivalent to 3 kgs of weight gain a year. And the two cups of coffee is equivalent to about 5.5 kgs of weight gain in a year. Now you want to know why when you join call, left college and joined the workplace, you put on weight. It's because you drink too much of milk tea and milk coffee. Solution, black tea, black coffee, drink plain water. The human race is eating too much, drinking too much. Simple water. Black tea. Zero calorie, zero calorie. No weight gain in the year. No, sir, but it doesn't taste very good and all that stuff. I'm used to having coffee. I'm too stressed out. Okay, a little bit of caffeine over here, a little bit of black coffee. Sir, it doesn't taste very good. You are landlord or you are tenant in your body? Taste bud is the owner or you are the owner? Food for thought. These are small changes that result in macroscopic weight loss. Small changes, just on tea coffee. Pankaj, print out this slide, no? Put it in front of the tea coffee machine. I did this in a Fortune 500 company. The HR came back to me and said, there was complaint from staff. Why are you taking away our tea or coffee? We didn't take away the tea or coffee. We put this poster up. So the consumption, according to them, dropped by a whopping 65% in one month. Everyone shifted to green tea, black tea. So awareness allows you to get to the next level. 
when you travel and you go different parts of the world what what could you do eat a healthy snack before you leave home drink a lot of water before your meal when you go out to restaurants choose steam grilled roasted options share it with a colleague so you split it down don't do fried potatoes do uh, just so like can you get a steak or something like that say hey can you give me instead of potatoes could you give me vegetables sauteed vegetables always start with a soup or a salad research has shown that this glycemic index spike the sugar spike is actually lower if you start with a salad or a soup i've worn one of those cgm devices last year it's absolutely true so you eat all your gas pus all your salad all your vegetables first and then eat your grain last protein second uh choose tomato based sauces over creamy sauces that would be a good option so my copri my brain is made up of 60% fat pankaj this is very interesting okay if you want to build a billion dollar organization the health of your employee is directly proportional to the brain that they incubate and the brain is made up of 60% of fat unfortunately sarji the fat in our diet is the bad fat that goes and reconstructs the brain over a 10 year period so this 27 year old young team by the time they said 37 ghanta seriously i have actually changed leadership teams over 2 years i've done a pin prick test check the omega 3 levels boss your omega 3 levels in the gutter then we started supplementing with flax seed we started supplementing with chia seed we started eating more walnut and we added two fish oil capsules or two vegan algae omega capsules per day a year later we checked again the levels had gone up people on a verbal basis reported back to me how good they felt in the brain how deep their sleep became how less suicidal they felt i had four people come up to me saying we had like suicidal tendencies leave my job shoot my boss <laughs> i hope nobody wants to shoot you pankaj but if you want safety don't get more security get more omega 3 in everyone's diet and 50% of this brain is made up of omega 3 you know my wife says i'm very insensitive koi mar jata hai na khudkushi karta hai they do suicide i'm like are yaar dekho yaar ye to pagal aadmi hai suicide kar diya yaar he did not eat correctly my wife is like how can you be so insensitive there is documented research from american prisons on violence and suicide they actually took two prison blocks in brazil or america somewhere in australia i remember reading the scientific paper so they fed them omega 3 and removed the bad fats and uh, a multivitamin another block they didn't do anything the incidences of violence came down by over 55% incidences of suicidal tendency dropped almost 90% so when i see employees sad in an organization maybe it's the stimulus of the people around them but what if it's biological what if the fault is that you're not eating correctly what is it if the fault is that you do not know that your grandmother and grandfather did the wrong jodi and brought into your family an omega 3 deficient gene ah this is 2024 so stop spending your money on buying a stupid iphone that cost 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees and spend some money on your bloody blood test and your genetic test and your uh, health because you're going to change that iphone you'll be able to buy a new iphone but you won't be able to change your brain and then when you're 60 years old ah mere paas bahut wealth hai i retired from pankaj's company i'm good and then doctor says sorry sir 50% of your brain is gone now you have to take uh, uh, parkinson's and alzheimer's medication all because you did not take care of your health in your 20s 30s and 40s okay i need to move faster because uh, i've got four more slides okay this is what you need to do okay all restaurants use palm oil globally palm oil is dalda palm oil is neutral in flavor which is globally wide preferred by all restaurants palm oil has high level of arachidonic acids which blocks your arteries people say hey why is india getting so many heart attacks you want to do one thing pankaj google up the palm oil import over the last 10 years google up how nobody noticed 2 years ago the finance minister dropped the import duty on palm oil because during the pandemic the farmers couldn't grow enough of natural groundnut and uh, all of these other oils so there was a deficiency of oil to keep markets held correctly for the common man for oil grain and oil is the most important not to go up drop the import duty so palm oil would come in palm oil flooded the market wow great blah, 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 boom nobody has talked about this as a guy who studied at iim ahmedabad i don't advertise that a lot i read the budget and i was like whoa while it's great for the economy and for the poor you're killing people so i put this together so pankaj you and i decided hey ryan fernando let's start a restaurant in dubai i'm like yes pankaj sir we'll start a restaurant in dubai you do the balance sheet 
Sir, we'll use Dalda, sir. Hey, Dalda, what man? It's 125 rupees and all. I am nutritionist. We have to use organic cow ghee. Hey, 580 rupees, boss. The omelette will cost uh, 500 dirhams. Nobody will buy. So this is the reason why heart attacks are happening. Because we're eating more outside food. When I was young, I ate out once a month because I didn't have the money. Today, I eat out five times a week because I have the money and I have the resources to click an app to get it to my office. And yeah, when you want to enjoy it, what do you do, Pankaj? Your team's like, sir, sir, bar jayega na, restaurant ka kuch khayega. Are you take them for a hiking trip instead of a meal? Tell Ryan Fernando said so. Eating should be the last thing. The human race is eating too much. So do all of these blood tests. I'll be happy to share all of this with anybody anywhere across the world to change your lives. We have been instrumental in changing about 18,000 lives in the last 13 years of Qua Nutrition being in practice. I have a team of 80 dietitians, and our job is to just get you to take the data and start changing the way you eat. So these are small things. Sunset. Try and look at the sun when it sets in the evening. I miss the sunset today. It's gloomy in Bangalore. No blue light from your TVs or from your mobile phones. Try and sleep at the same time every day. Try and sleep at the same time every day. Try and sleep at the same time every day. No, the signal did not break. I said it three times. Trust me on this. Your body will thank you. You want to lose weight? Start sleeping at the same time every day. Sir, what has got sleeping at the same time every day losing one kg fat? Do it for one year. And come back next year. If you have not lost weight, I'll give you permission to give me one slap. Supplement for those who have a problem on sleeping. You can do 3 milligrams of melatonin. Okay. Your room should be between 19 to 21 degrees Celsius for the best possible sleep. To sleep better, chamomile tea. Ladies, for your ovarian prevention of cancer, husbands, please make your wife a cup of chamomile tea every night. Chamomile for men is very good for muscle soreness and gives you deep sleep. Pistas, 10 numbers at 6 p.m., Walnut, two numbers at 6 p.m. Kiwi, if you agree with Kiwi, Kiwi is also a great sleep inducer. I use a special magnet in my bed for biohacking. I use white noise. I use music which has bioutinal beats. This, ladies and gentlemen, is when you start behaving correctly and do six months of proper diet planning and proper exercise planning and blood tests, then I will tell you what all of these hacks you can do. You do all of these hacks and don't correct your nutrition, don't correct your water, don't correct your sleep, is all useless. It's like, it's like that uh, rip-off Ferrari in Dubai where guys put a Ferrari sticker on his Toyota thinking he's driving a Ferrari. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make this presentation available to all of you. Uh, if you do go to my Instagram profile in the link in the bio, if you click see Nutrition Secrets, you will go to a form called the Health Checkup. Or you can actually click this link over here if I send the presentation to you. And uh, is there a way I can send it to all the participants right now? I think I can oh, yes. I'm yes. just going to send it on the chat box to the panelist. Uh, you can send it to everyone as well. I can send it to everyone. No, it's allowing me to only host and panelists. Nevertheless, I'll send you the link. You can, yes. you can forward it to everyone. So if they want to book any one of these things, wherever they are in the world, even if we don't have a partner in that part of the world, we we'll guide you on what you can do. And my nutritionist team will help you out. I'm almost come to the end where we will take, um, uh, we will take questions. Um, you can reach me at this number, 9743430000. I've written two books, Eating Secrets of Champion and Wheatless. And if you click on my picture over here, if you get the presentation, it'll take you to my LinkedIn profile. Secret to all of you over here, I'm more liable to check my LinkedIn messages as compared to my Instagram. Instagram, I have a whole team managing it. But uh, those of you who want to reach out to me, I'm uh, very connected on LinkedIn most of the time. And I think that is my last slide. Yeah, that's my last slide. So shall we do questions? Yes, yes, we will. And uh, just before uh, we begin with all the questions, I would like, I, I see Pankaj is uh, all set with his first question probably. So Pankaj, over to you, uh, if you have anything to, to add. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you so much once again. Uh, we remain grateful to you to come and join and guide our team and uh, client and our well-wishers in the first week of January, uh, despite your busy schedule, uh, but really thankful to you. Uh, quite a good takeaway for me. Of course, I've been uh, following through your team, uh, uh, you know, a couple of things on a daily basis, but a few more takeaway for me today, especially sleeping on time, uh, whether it's six or eight hours, that's a different discussion, but at least we can start sleeping on time. Yeah. Uh, coming very quickly, uh, you know, in the interest of time, Ryan, you know, the recently, again, that came from Bangalore, from Mr. Narayan Muthi, when he quoted that one must work for 70 hours 
and when we hear youth complaining about work uh, and you know work and health or work life balance what's your take on the comment which uh, mr naramuthi have made about that youth should uh, work more and uh, work not work life balance is not uh, a discussion should for them yeah i'm sure you heard of that when yes yes i did, i did i did i was asked this question once before and uh, there are two parts to this okay i ask every youngster would if given a chance would you go and try and win an olympic medal and most people say yes you are olympians in the workplace your gold medal is the bank balance you accumulate every year i was the youngest business head uh, in a pharmaceutical south indian marwadi firm at the age of 31 the next youngest business head was 61 they only took old people the reason i became the youngest business head is because i worked very hard did i ignore my health absolutely yes i did so now i am on the other side of the coin as a health coach so i tell the youngsters work intelligently smart use ai use your technology be disciplined don't get distracted by social media at work so be productive for 4 hours or 5 hours the balance time when you go away home 5 hours 6 hours at home get that 1 hour of workout get that uh, nutrition at work in the morning before you go to work and when you come back from the work bang on sleep as much as possible breathe in your car so when you do all of these hacks assume you want to hit 70 hours what is 70 hours so to those of you who work 5 days a week it means you have to cross 13 hours a day which is quite tough but if you work 6 days a week little bit easier if you work 7 days a week quite easy 7 10 70 10 hours a day now as an entrepreneur earlier i was an employee as an entrepreneur i will tell you the pros and cons of being an entrepreneur the cons of being an entrepreneur is there's no clock in and clock out you are married to your business you are married to your employees you are married to always working because it is your other baby but if you are an employee it is not your baby but my advice to everybody is if you want a larger pile of the share of profit it comes in your salaries and bonuses then you need to work for that it's a reward system it's a capitalistic system in the process of doing this 70 hours if you do the calculation 8 hours 12 weeks are 72 you got 72 hours for sleep 70 hours for working so the balance is how you manage that extra curricular time and in this 10 hours of working you eat well you eat really well you eat expensive and you make sure you negotiate with your boss that you can go for a 45 minute workout during your lunch break or you get a chance to leave at 5 o'clock go work out and come back to the office and work again or you leave your office late at 9 o'clock in the evening work out but that's a bad idea because i told you not to eat 3 hours before going to sleep so then you need to contact me and how we can rejig the whole thing and men should work out in fasted state which means the best time for men to work out is morning as soon as you wake up go work out shower get to work women should work out in fasted state which is all the women i would advise a workout um around 3 o'clock in the afternoon you have an early lunch at 12 o'clock and work out at 3 o'clock So these are my recommendations to people, um, and the choice is personal. Evolution has made people uh, to to be the warriors in the tribe. So you run and go to the next village and plunder. Then there'll be the thirty percent of the tribe which is they'll see what the leader is doing and follow the leader. And then there's thirty percent of the tribe that will sit and say, "I am not going to go to war today." So evolution has made some of us to be go getters, some of us to sit in the middle of the pie, and some of us to be completely laid back. Figure out which one you are. There's no harm in it. And if you're the guy who's going to be like sitting down and saying, "Hey, you guys do all the work. Open up a beach shack and go and run a business from there." That's the best thing you could do. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. You know, uh, it's uh, you know very very useful. I think your message is clear, and I will see definitely if uh, we could have some option of gymming during uh, just after the lunch hours or in the lunch break. As very quickly, second one. You know, and we've been hearing about a lot about intermittent fasting. What quickly would like to share? You know, what is the right way of executing intermittent fasting if that work you did spoke about the you know religious you know what we have you know this uh, fasting and otherwise but intermittent fasting has been growing i mean i've been people have been using this what's your suggestions to our listeners very very simple there are two ways to do intermittent fasting either you're a morning person or you're a night person if you're a morning person and you love your breakfast eat early then eat very early your dinner finish your dinner at 5 o'clock If you're an evening person, then eat your breakfast at twelve thirty-one and eat your last meal at eight o'clock. This is the best way to eat intermittent fasting. The novice intermittent faster can do eight hours of eating window, meaning I'll eat my breakfast at ten o'clock. So ten to six o'clock is eight hours, or do twelve to eight o'clock, which is eight hours. This is the novice. 
the intermediary guys are six hours. Eat your breakfast at six o'clock, uh, twelve o'clock, and finish your dinner by six o'clock. The the pros, are the guys who eat at two o'clock, one meal, and eat another meal at six o'clock, and then they are done. I think this is the best way to do intermittent fasting. The scientific way also is to put a CGM glucose monitor on you for the heck of it, and figure out when you eat how do you get sugar spikes. So I recently did a client, and we found out that her morning fasting created more sugar spikes. So we shifted her entire eating to the morning half, and so her only problem was after five o'clock I feel like eating because all my life I ate. So we came up with solutions which distracted her, where she just drank specialized herbal teas or water. and within 9 to 10 days she completely changed her eating cycle now what's her biggest problem when she goes out with friends they are all saying let's go to this restaurant she's saying let's go for a movie i don't want to eat let's go shopping but i don't want to eat and if they say we're going to eat she has a cup of green tea along with them so i think intermittent fasting is a thumbs up if you're overweight if you've got cholesterol diabetes or hyp uh, hypertension i'm sorry bp hypertension same thing or any brain fog or digestive problems then please consult a medical nutritionist my my team are medical nutritionists we will do it scientifically for you so that you don't harm your body right one of the i will just pick up uh, while we had a few questions but let me go to the audience one of the audience have asked that what precautions should i take as i just finished cancer treatment okay so this is important we have a oncology division in our company and the the benchmark is they are depending on male or female in female most of the cancers are driven by estrogen or progesterone from breast cancer or ovarian point of view so there are certain foods you should eat and certain foods you should not eat if you're related to cancer with blood cancer digestive system cancer which is any of the organs of the human body then we have to look at what is the treatment that was given to you and when you have come out of cancer this is my solution number 1 do a food allergy intolerance test from germany that will tell you which of the foods which will do kujli in your body remove those foods second do a dna genetic test for your nutrition so you'll get the genetic view point of how to see the nutritional deficiencies in your body and then accordingly construct third do a poop a stool a potty sample dna analysis called the microbiome analysis now this will give you a bird's eye view of how your microbes digest the food love certain foods hate certain foods so when you put all of this together now you're eating very scientifically as a choice of foods and then that's the first one then the second one is how much should this person who just suffered from cancer now eat so step on a weighing scale what is your muscle what is your fat or oh, this person requires 1200 calories a day now we know that when you feed cancer with sugar the cancer tumor grows so this person has come out of cancer treatment assuming that you've got all the cancer tumors we now know that this person probably was feeding too much of sugar to the cancer tumors so now the second decision is do i give more calories than required by this person or lesser and when i give calories the percentage of fat carbohydrate and protein is accordingly decided for that individual based on genetics and body weight and cancer treatment so as i always say i'm the judge i cannot pass execution of judgment on what are the right things to do but i do know that foods that are rich in polyphenols flavonoids and to sign it so these are the greens the purples and all of that stuff are really good now i will share something with you i recently had a breast cancer lady and i told my doctor give her resveratrol resveratrol is found in grapes and fortunately by the grace of god i have an amazing team and an amazing software so when we put everything together it came back there was a study that resveratrol for estrogen positive women actually promotes breast tissue tumor growth ha ah. so even celebrity nutritionist ryan fernando knows hudu it's like saying no punk it's some guy comes are yaar is mein india mein ye blood ye stock market ye laga hua everyone is a financial expert everyone is a nutritionist so when we come to medical conditions it's a case basis analysis where food is a therapeutic drug so in my interest to improve anti aging recovery to this lady and because she was a marathon runner my first line of thought was high antioxidants which is the best guy acai berry so acai berry passed through but resveratrol didn't pass through this is why people with cancer have to work with a medical dietitian and not wing it fortunately for me the latest doctors at sloan in uh, the cancer treatment center of america are now all working with medical dietitians in india slowly they started coming to us but the normal thing is are yaar kuch bhi kha sakte hai Do you know that most of your cancers have come because of your diet or your environment? So food for thought. That's why I say go organic. Reduce the chemical exposure. Uh, reduce your stress. Breathe better. Take a chill pill. Okay. 
Thanks. Another one from our one of our colleague, you know, which is actually inspire everyone in our office, Kunjan, Kunjan Kaparia. Uh, he she, said, grow more muscle. <laughs> yeah, that's a resolution. She has asked uh, later the question, what vitamin supplements are essential for vegetarians or women in their 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s? So I built Nutrilite in India, which is the largest food supplement brand. I used to work for them and we would prescribe supplements to all our distributors. Take, 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 take. Fast forward 25 years, I now have my own nutrition clinic and I do the testing and you don't need a multivitamin unless you have a nutritional deficiency. So step one, do the complete vitamin and mineral blood test once a year. If money is not an issue, do it twice a year. If any vitamin or mineral is deficient, pick up the phone, call up Ryan Fernando. I will help prescribe from my team what you should do from a food plan first. Assume you have low vitamin B9. Are bhai, thoda pistachio kao. Plus pistachio color. Six months later, test has it gone up. Or take a standalone vitamin B9 alternate days. What doctors do? They give you a prescription for 30 days, take for 30 days. But do you have a genetic receptor that is not absorbing vitamin B9 and therefore you need a lifelong management of vitamin B9? So a girl taking a vitamin or mineral actually is not a standardized practice in my opinion. I come back to the bio-individuality. You are going to remember me 10 years later. Are you? Ryan Fernando said bio-individuality. There is going to be an Apple iPhone bloody. You put your finger on it. It will take out a blood sample and tell you, Sir ji, today, yes, ma'am ji, today you have low vitamin B9. Please eat more of this. Bio-individuality. So taking a multivitamin, if you want to take a multivitamin on your own prescription, the safest thing, I don't advise it, but the safest way is do it twice a week. Saturday, Sunday. Take a multivitamin with your breakfast. Sir, why, should, why don't I take seven days a week? You could overdose. Your body is smart enough to know that this is a chemical. It's not coming from food. So whenever you take a multivitamin, take it with your food. So that vitamin C and that zinc and all is like, hey, bye, you ate uh, nice uh, baked beans. No, I'm going along with the baked beans into the body. So that would be uh, the thing. Uh, am I anti-supplement? No, I'm not anti-supplement. I'm actually pro-supplement. But I'm not pro-supplement when every person on the planet thinks that they are a nutritionist. Because then I can sit down and argue with you saying that you're actually harming your body. We had this incident where this lady took Ayurvedic um, herbals and um, so she came to us and her hemoglobin dropped in two, three months. It was 12.8, then it dropped to 9.6. So I asked her all the questions. Did you have dengue? Did you have malaria? Did you have malaria? So nothing, nothing. Liver was showing very bad parameters. So what are you taking? She says, no, my Ayurvedic doctor gave me something. I said, go meet a hematologist and please tell him you have liver poisoning. She didn't believe me. She went to that guy. That guy did some extra tests on her. Says they found out heavy lead content in her. So she assumed that ashwagandha, very good for brain health, safe. Now ashwagandha is okay, but the compounding of ashwagandha by that Ayurvedic manufacturer in traditional practice of Ayurveda was to roll the medicine with heavy metals. So when people say, do you believe in Ayurveda? Of course I believe in Ayurveda. The same way my grandfather rode a cycle. I believe in riding a cycle, but I also have a luxury vehicle. Let's advance to 2014 where prescription of nutrition, prescription of superfoods, prescription of supplements should be the mainstay. So learn more about it. And look, at the end of the day, stop experimenting with your body. You have only one Rolls Royce. This is like Pankaj driving. Rolls Royce gives them a brand manual says, boss, don't off-road this car on the Dubai desert. Huh? Pankaj is like, yaar, we will drive this in the Dubai desert. Next day, he takes it to the mechanic. Sir, what kya kya? Left ball bearing is gone off the Rolls Royce. You went off-roading, you broke it. You're born and he could buy another Rolls Royce then. But what I'm trying to communicate to you is your body can't be changed. So in the yeah. interest of not breaking your body in 20s, 30s and 40s, eat healthy, eat organic, do a blood test of vitamins and minerals. If anything is low, get in touch with Baba Ryan. Great. So, uh, one, yeah. Yeah. so one of yeah. our attendees has asked uh, how to get some nutrition in when someone has eating disorder, like a recommendation of any food items. So eating disorder is a psychological issue plaguing a lot of our teenage girls these days uh, because of the image problems. Uh, because uh, and, and just to share with all the parents in this group and all, mostly with girls because they're image conscious and even though their weight may be overweight or I have had girls who are 38 kgs thinking they are overweight. So it is a psychological problem for which I work with a psychiatrist on my team, number one. So please do not think you can self-help your child. Get medical intervention. Number two, no matter what you say, which food is good or bad or ugly, that child, if they psychologically do not work on the mental part of anorexia or bulimia, which are the medical conditions or the eating disorder conditions, will never consume even what you say scientifically. 
I've had a girl who used to come, she used to drink one and a half liter of water before walking into my clinic desk so that she'd weigh one and a half kg more. And my team asked me, sir, how did you find out? I was like, dude, before I went, I went to the toilet, I went and stood outside my office and I'm looking at the car down and I can see this chick seated in the car and drinking water. So I just asked her casually, how much water do you drink? No, I just had a sip of water. So I, I, I said, okay, wait here. I went down and I spoke to her. Like, no, she drank two. She asked me to buy two bottles of water and she finished two bottles of water. So anorexia and eating disorders are a very complex psychological model first. I can give you the best foods on the planet, a date, a guava, a calorie dense dry fruit laddu. But would that kid want to eat that is the question. So we do have three people on our team, Lijia, Ritu and Suhasni, who are psychological eating disorder specialists. I do not, I don't do that. Um, I'm not being able to convince because I am very logical. I'm like, dude, you're skinny, your BM is wrong, please eat. I'm like landlord or tenant. I don't have like, I'll cajole you to come out of your uh, tenant into landlord model. So with children, we need a little bit of finesse. Uh, it is a long process uh, and we need to give them a lot of confidence building measures. Like they're beautiful, they're wonderful as children. Many of these children, the fault is the parents, huh? by the way. Parents, you guys have eaten wrong. And all of you are 27 to 35. If you're smoking and drinking and deciding to have an accidental pregnancy, I'll punch you in your bloody nose because you'll have only one kid. So if you decide to have a kid, don't drink, don't consume alcohol and eat correctly. So your sperm and your egg is absolute perfection. So that soul that is roaming around in the dunya that comes into your sperm and egg fusion is a perfect soul thing. Hey, bhai, ye to Rolls Royce ka sperm or Rolls Royce ka egg jodi ho gaya. The problem today with all our diseases, psychological problems and XXYZ, I just look at the parents, dude, you screwed up. You screwed up at work. You ate wrong. You did not sleep enough. You smoked too much. You had too much alcohol. Take it from a guy who has seen thousands of cases. Autism, Down syndrome, <sighs> children with deformity. Sometimes I, I just like, I'm just so grateful to God that I have a normal kid. You know, and my kid is dyslexic. He can't spell properly. He gets 2 on 25 in Hindi. I'm like, Shabash, beta. 2 on 25. You got one mark more than last time. Children are special. You're born to us. So please, when you become a parent, you decide to become a parent, don't have an accidental pregnancy. Have a planned pregnancy. Sorry, Pankaj, I get very passionate about this topic because I see the future with people who are 70 who come to me. And if I ask them, what would you do if you went back when you're 25? The first thing people say, take care of my health. Learn more in my job. Make more money when I'm younger. Because as I get older, I don't have the health or bandwidth capacity to go to that level. So these are small, small things that I would say to everyone listening in today. I agree. The two last questions. One is from Vijay Sony from Saudi Arabia. Vitamin D3 and B12 deficiency is common issue with most veggies in Gulf. So this is not only in Gulf. This is the entire Indian genomic race has a vitamin B12 and D. Even I have a vitamin D deficiency. So what I'm doing is I'm testing twice a year all my vitamins and minerals. And I know after about six or seven testings that I have to take vitamin D twice a month, 60,000 IU to keep my levels at 40 to 50. Don't try and be bottom of the class in your vitamin D and B12 levels. Don't try and be 218 in B12 and don't try and be 30 in vitamin D. Try and be at 50 levels, 50 nanograms levels in vitamin D and try and be at around 300 to 400. All vegetarians will not get B12 in their diet. You need to take a nutritional supplement for that. Take a sublingual, which you put on your mouth. It is called, uh, not methylcobalamin, it's called, uh, it's not called cyanocobalamin, it's called methylcobalamin. Vitamin B12, methylcobalamin level. Next question, do you have anything? Yeah, uh, we have one quick question from Chanchal. Uh, individual residents in the PGs are unable to prepare their own meals. So what should they consume to maintain their health? Very, very good question. This is most of my team. So what I tell them, see PGs, we get very, very basic food, very basic. And that PG is like all restaurant owners. Huh? They will not use olive oil and all. They'll use cheap dalda, cheap ration rice. Everything is cheap. So first things first, those who live in PGs, when you order out, don't order biryani from a local cheap food restaurant order a good healthy meal when you're eating out, if it's three, four times a week, number one. Number two, when you go to work, stop at the local supermarket or order online from the organic stores, carrot, cucumber, tomato. Keep it in a tiffin box, carry it to work. Cut a carrot, make friends with the housekeeping. My housekeeping loves me. Every month I give her 500 rupees. I'm like, Mary, every day, 11 o'clock, one guava. So I pay for the guava. I pay for the carrot and the tomato, but I pay her 500 rupees to cut it specially for me and give it to me. So all of you earn enough, yaar. Pay the housekeeping domestic staff to get you that healthy cut salad, cut fruit at your desk. Look at dry fruit laddu. 
because of the uh, thing or do what I used to do. I used to keep some pistas and almonds and walnut and I used to pack it in Ziploc bags and make five of them and keep it in my office. So every day I would eat pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, something. So that's another way to get nutrition. Do a blood test, vitamins and minerals. If anything is low, take a multivitamin twice a week. For those of you who are skinny like me, you could buy a protein shake without sweetener in it and mix it in an almond or coconut milk or normal milk if you're not allergic to milk. Other point that you should do is once a week, make sure that the one meal you cook yourself or go to a friend's house and cook. And all the ladies and all the mothers, if there are any women watching this seminar, you have no idea the power of your touch. Research has shown that food, water vibrates at a real frequency. When I serve my kid, I pray, dear Lord, bless this food. I'm giving it to my son. I didn't even prepare it. But I'm praying to the angels and the creators of the universe. And I'm saying, make this food energetic. Today, we can't measure it. But mark my words, in the next 100 years, we will be able to measure the quantum energy signature coming off food. Who has grown it? Who has harvested it? Who has carried it? Who has sold it to you? Who has cut it? Who has prepared it? And who has served it to you? All of this will add to the energy coming to you. And if you don't know anything of this, before you eat, ladies and gentlemen, do what I do. I pray over my food for 10 seconds. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Creator. Thank you, Bhagwan. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, Vishnu. Thank you, Shiva, for this food in front of me. Bless the people that gave it to me. Bless the people that provide me the ability to eat this food. Dear food, as you enter my body, please heal my calf muscles today because karate sir broke my calf muscles. Dear, dear food, also heal my brain. I had too much of a session with 360 TF today. So my brain has gone full beja fry. So please rejuvenate my brain. Thank you. Start eating. It's very important. This is one way PG people can change the energy signature of your food. I know I sound like a quack guru or something like that. You have nothing lose to lose to just try this out. Uh, next, we have one interesting question like uh, how to avoid the midnight cravings. If you have midnight cravings, most likely your B12 and vitamin D and hemoglobin is low. So when people have midnight cravings, cravings is the human evolution of the body saying that bhai, you have never given me anything. So it's most likely you have a vitamin or mineral deficiency. So what I would do is I would add soda, sparkling water with electrolytes or salt in it with lemon in it in the evenings. I would take a magnesium supplement at night. I would drink chamomile tea and then eat two large pieces or half a credit size of 100% dark cocoa chocolate. And tell me in three months if your sugar cravings do not disappear. If they do not disappear, you have an insulin problem or sugar problem and you're moving towards diabetes. So then you need to do an HbA1c blood test, a fasting glucose blood test or HOMA score and an insulin fasting level. When I look at all of this, I will tell you if you're moving in the direction of becoming a diabetic and we can see it a decade in advance. I can see it 10 years in advance that you're going to become a diabetic with the blood test. So then I tell you this information. Then you're like, okay, pastry at night, no. Ryan sir said, eat two pistas, two walnuts, two almonds. Just eat that, drink water, go to sleep. And you have midnight cravings because you're not supposed to be awake at midnight. You're supposed to go to sleep at 8 o'clock at night. No, 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 sir, how you can go to sleep? Array, we created electricity, you know. But evolution was last 200,000 years in Homo, homo sapiens. But electricity is only last 100 years. Our grandmothers and grandfathers created so many children because they had no Netflix, no? They had to entertain each other. So by the time the sun went down, what you do? Put the children to sleep and then you banged each other. Think about it. We should be bed in bed by 10 o'clock. Please, everyone go to sleep early. Stop watching Netflix. Netflix is controllable. You could watch it early morning on your way to work. Right. Uh, I'll just take up two more questions. One posted by Pankaj. But just before that, uh, this is a query by most of the women out there. And we've received this as a question, uh, you know, while we were doing these registrations. During my periods of menstrual cycle, I experienced vomiting and food doesn't digest well. What should be the ideal food to eat? I've had this condition before where women don't feel like eating during their menstruation and this comes from evolution. A lot of women, see women, there are different types of women. Okay, Women are created for birthing a lot of children. Women are uh, there to take care of the birthed children but do not produce children. And there are women who are warriors. So, and this is evolution point of view. So what I believe is that when a person cannot eat, there are underlying conditions of maybe PCOD or thyroid. So there is a hormonal fluctuation and it affects the gut microbiome, the bacteria in the gut who say, stop, don't give me anything. I don't want to digest any food now. In such a condition, we rechange the entire weight of a woman over a six-month, one-year period. 
how she eats for nutritional deficiencies, magnesium deficiency, iodine deficiency, thyroid deficiency. Then we put in foods like red clover tea, give her a vitamin E Evion during the five days before the start of her menstruation cycle. Shift over to foods like in Ayurveda, which we call as low heat foods, cucumber, microgreens, a salad, maybe a little bit of curd rice, pomegranate and rice, not heavy food. And as I said before, a human lady, if she's not planning to have a pregnancy, can go three days without food, just have electrolytes and water and put some amount of food to prevent acidity burn. Could be a banana, could be a guava. So you can even have fruits during that. You don't need to do dal chawal roti because your ancestors thought you did dal chawal roti at breakfast, lunch, dinner. The only issue comes is the woman is anemic, has low ferritin and has low body weight. Then this advice that I just gave is defunct. Then I would request this said person to meet a medical dietitian who works on what we call as menstruation cycle issues and try and figure out what is the best eating pattern, what is the best superfood pattern and what is the best uh, supplements I think. In fact, there's something on a seed cycling. There are certain dry fruits and seeds that are given in the first 14 days of the menstruation cycle and then certain type of dry fruits are eaten in the next 14 days of the menstruation cycle. It's called seed cycling for menstruation. You can Google this up. It's actively available on the internet and you can do your own jugad. But if money is not an issue, please hire a dietitian and work with the dietitian like a financial advisor. Last question and I apologize that we're probably positive of time and we don't want Ryan to be holding backwards. So you can, of course, email your questions. I've sent the IDs where you can email uh, the last question for the evening is uh, from Saudi Arabia. Mr. Chandra Sekar and Jaya Raman has asked how to avoid thyroid uh, through food habits for a person who is age of 25. So first of all, if a person has thyroid at the age of 25, the TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone, is dependent on 10 nutritive molecules, which is inclusive of protein, vitamin B12, vitamin C, magnesium, selenium, chromium, zinc, and a host of other things. I can't remember all 10. So when you eat correctly, this goes to the pituitary and says, hey, bye. TSH banalo. Now, when there's a nutritional deficient, TSH is a rebai, nay banasak tai. So, thyroid like, boy, oi, thyroid stimulating hormone, come stimulate me, produce thyroid. Are yaar, wo to admi to humko nutrition nay diya. I'm not talking about being gundu or fat or in muscle. No, no, no. I'm talking about micronutrition. So, the first things first is to look at the micronutrition blood test. Second is to look if this person has a family history of thyroid problem where Thyroid can be genetically also having an issue. And I've had many cases where I have to take people off milk and gluten and their thyroid has improved. So look at removing gluten from wheat, barley and rye. Look at removing lactose or milk for a period of six months. Improve your nutrition. Take a multivitamin thrice a week after doing a blood test. Meet a nutritionist or dietitian. This should work. In terms of the foods that slap the thyroid, in the old school, we had something known as goitrogenic foods, which are foods like cauliflower, strawberries, spinach, uh, ragi, which did or, or millets, which did not agree with the thyroid, and hence they are avoided. So please meet with a dietitian at Kwa Nutrition Clinics. It, it costs sixteen thousand five hundred rupees for a three month plan uh, at the Kwa Nutrition Clinics, and you can do all of these things and blood tests, and then get a new diet plan every month, and then experiment with that. And and hopefully at the age of twenty five, we can actually reverse any thyroid issues because people should get thyroid only at. 50 or 60, not at 25. If it's at 25, there's there's a nutritional deficiency diet problem. Right. Uh, thank you, Ryan. That was that was really interesting. Thank you for all the tips. And uh, I, I can tell you, Ryan, from last year's time, we, we did have our office flooded with chamomile tea uh, just after your web webinar. And uh, I, you know, that's that's something that we did as as uh, as yeah, a practice. You know, Himachi, the thing is, there are all gurus and experts out there. But going from the level of knowledge awareness or spiritual following to practicing it in daily life requires community effort. So I'm really happy that it started in your offices and places and this financial community because uh, look at running in some parts of the world. It's literally a craze, right? So if you go to like Amsterdam and all, everyone cycles, everyone right. walks, right? It is a community ideology. So I believe that the financial guys are some of the most astute visionaries, actuaries, they're able to see based on data. So if you as a team, if you as a team start with 10, 15 people, 20 people, it creates a movement. I've been doing this for 15 years. And maybe I have a fan, fan falling of about 1 lakh people. But the thought process, Himanshi, is if we can get chamomile tea in the office, if we can get 10,000 steps, if you can do all of these small, small things, changes, diet plan comes secondary, exercise plan comes secondary. First, make these changes. Right. And and we also did the implementation, I think, for the last uh, six months in office, everybody walks after lunch and we do 
uh, you know, few steps uh, that we that we definitely do. Uh, we also have small, small competitions going on amongst the team members about how many steps each one did, did for a particular day. So that's something that keeps us inspiring. And thank you for inspiring us. Uh, I'll probably put it across to uh, Saksham for the last thank you note. Yeah, thank you, Makshi. Uh, in closing, I just want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to each uh, and every one of you being part of today's insightful webinar, Financing Your Wealth. Uh, 360 TM is not just about the trade finance expertise, it's uh, about the forecasting and holistic culture that uh, embrace your significance of physical wealth, mental well-being. The Fit FinTech initiative is a testament to your commitment to, to promising a healthier and happier workforce. I extend my sincere thanks to QR notations for their valuable insights and the guidance. Remember, health is not about the making the grand gestures, it's about the small constant steps to take each day. Let's uh, take a lesson from today's uh, webinar, inspire positive changes in your life. And the May 2024 be a year where we not uh, only met our professional goals, but also surpass our personal health as well. So uh, here's a healthier and more uh, year ahead and each member of 360 DF family. Thank you. Thank you once again. And stay committed to, to your health and well-being. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you once again. And uh, we definitely see you next year. See you next year, guys. With more God, God bless. God bless. Yes. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.